Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Mulfar Project. So, uh, um, I have some good news and some bad news. The, the good news is that, well, you know, today I will be able to draw the uh, Mulfar Project. Bad news is that to, uh, to, uh, uh, tomorrow after that I won't be able to do it. Yeah, uh, because I actually need to uh, babysit my nephew, and uh, that is a thing that I need to do. <laughs> Then Friday, you know, I will be going away, and then the day after that, I will also be going away, and then the day after that, I will also be going away. So, uh, yeah, um, the the whole weekend that I'm, I will be going away. So that's a bit, that's a that's an issue that uh, needs to be uh, uh, solved. Well, don't worry about it too much, I would say, because uh, I will try to do my very best to. Uh, uh, record one more thing before I will be uh, leaving tomorrow, so hopefully that will be uh, done by tonight. Yeah, probably. Anyway, um, I hope you all have enjoyed. Uh, well, f uh, this message, and uh, let's get started on this because we do, and uh, it's important. All right. So. Um, one of the major issues that I have right now is that I need to, uh, realize that I am a little bit out of, uh, out of sync. I know with all the, all the, the things that are coming, but you know, being busy is a good thing. You know, if, if you didn't, if you were not busy when, uh, when things go around, around you doing busyness, it's, it can cause some issues. Like for instance, for instance, um, if I would not have been able to do certain types of things right now, like, you know, uh, real com coming to the realization that I technically had my uh, work done Monday, or well, my homework done by Monday, it's a, it's a thing. Uh, it would have been so much easier to understand. Also, doing uh, having my daily walk done today uh, was also very windy, so... Yeah. But, yeah... It's it's very important that you are able to realize like ah well, sometimes things go in there. Uh, sometimes things go different than you plan to do. And you need to adapt on that situation. Like for instance, right now you know we only have one day to work on this, and then you know tomorrow we won't, and then you know Friday, Saturday, and Sunday we won't be able to do things, and then Monday we can start again, trying to do it. But. Uh, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to those days because I'm actually planning to um, go to a city and figuring out what is what what you can do in the city when you know the event is not there. Um, they should have actually done the uh, they should have hold it off from the event and just you know plan the event, even if they even if it would be cancelled because technically. They now switch it to August, and, you know, in August, maybe, you know, the government is like, hey, let's shut it down again, and then, you know, nothing will come from it. Which can when which can cause major, uh, major, and I mean, like, major uh, issues. Because, you know, you have certain type of, uh, certain type of things, like, you know, you want to book, uh, book a hotel, you want to make sure that the event is running properly, you're inviting special guests, so uh, having it to be cancelled twice is uh, is a major issue, and it's gonna be maybe gonna be happening again because well, you know, government here is a little bit of a wet noodle sometimes. It's like, oh no, again we are having bad numbers. Shut it all down. It's it's great. It's great. So yeah, um. What I'm trying to do here is actually just, you know, getting this bit done and then we can start with the coloring of it. But, uh, yeah, a lot of stuff is going to be happening. Uh, for instance, uh, I'm going to be trying to see if uh, any uh, good food is around in that area. Because technically I want to know what kind of food is there, what kind of people are living in that city. Just to, you know, get, get a little glimpse. And also the five-star restaurant is going to be fun. Maybe gonna be inviting some friends over just to enjoy the food there, because you know, why not? It's a five-star restaurant. I don't think people mind if I just bring along some friends. 
but uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a lot of work, but uh, eventually, you know, it will pay off. So, what I'm planning to do uh, after that, you know, all that all that stuff that we are all that stuff that I'm gonna be doing. Um, I'm going to be working back on uh, Monday. I will be working back on the Moffat project at full speed, or at least I try. Uh, after working, of course, uh, again. So in uh, until the midday, I will be working, and then you know I can go home. And then uh, once it's evening, I will arrive home, and then I will be able to have food, and then you know can work on the Moffat project. That's normally how the Moffat project works. So it's literally the ending of the day. For me, most of the times, but uh, yeah, uh, I hope I hope we'll we'll be able to work on it again. And then you know, the Tuesday I will be working on uh, another emotion again. Hopefully, hopefully that will uh, get me to the place I want to be. Um, probably gonna be trying to do the crying emotion. Ugh. It's gonna be a hard one though, because crying emotions are like really. You need to be emotional by that, and uh, you know. I am not good with emotions. I am learning how to do it. I'm learning how to draw proper uh, faces. And all that learning does take a lot of time. It's good that it takes a lot of time because, you know, if it didn't take a lot of time, things might look a little bit silly. And heavy rain. Lovely. So, yeah. Um, what can I say about this then? Well,. You know, this this project is always the biggest one. It's the biggest of the bunch. Because of how... It, well, maybe not be the biggest one, but it, it, it's a project nonetheless. You know, it's not as, you know, the visual novel where you need to write and draw. At the draw Or you can write and draw and you know, switch between them. This is only drawing. And what I do enjoy about this most of the times is just, you know, the way of how I handle the drawing. How I see new ideas and implement them in different drawings as well. And that is a good thing. You know, sometimes, you know, you just need to relax, figure out, like, what you, what the problem is, and then, you know, go from there. My my issue right now is just that I have, like, a little bit of an issue with the, uh, with how the tree is going to be looking after I'm done with all the uh, lines drawn in, doodling lines drawn in, because, you know, this tree is indeed a very spicy boy. So yeah. So uh, what do I think that is gonna be ending up this thing to be? Well, it's a tree, so therefore you know it would not be that problematic. And you know there is a lot of variety in trees, so I should be fine here. I should be fine. It's no need to worry. Also today it has been it was so windy and muddy. It was like raining almost a whole day long because you know. It's winter, and uh, winter is supposed to be a lot of rain, right? Uh, I highly doubt that that's going to be the image that you think it would have been, but uh, no. Here in this country, rain is all everything we have. It, there is no snow. There is no snowman. Only rain. And uh, it's a little bit depressive sometimes because of how the rain works. It's like, oh, it's a lovely day outside. Don't mind me just ruining it all by just putting all the rain down for a long time, period of time, because, you know, it's not a very high country. It's not even a very uh, close country that is near the... Uh, it, it's a very muddy, rainy... It's like England, but worse. <laughs> when it comes to weather, it's like... Oh, you have England. Well, you know, England at least has some decent uh, climate, but here in the Netherlands it's even worse because of how the how the rain comes. We have like we have the cold winter, and we have the north or the north cold winter coming in our in our faces, and then we also have a rain combined combined it too, and you have icy cold water dripping on your fingers when you are trying to drive a bike or ride a bike, not drive. Ugh. Stupid. Nobody drives a bike. Well, maybe with all the electricity scooters now. Mm, probably. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun country, you know. Just always, always rain. Wherever wherever you go, you will see the rain. 
And it doesn't mean it's bad. It means that, you know, the rain is always there, so therefore, you know, all the all the, all the fields where you're working on always get the right amount of nutrition. But you need to be careful to not uh, put too many... Um, how do you say that? Her compost, yes. You don't want to put too many compost in on your fields because of uh, the drainage of the water. This is why we have strict rules on that, because the government doesn't want to have, you know, uh, certain uh, rivers to be infected with compost, which causes, you know, water supply to be a hassle. Also, it can cause wild. It can also co cause a lot of wild growth to arrive in certain places where we don't want to have wild growth, like you know, a forest that is going to be like heavily, uh, heavily compost, and so therefore, you know, the forest will grow rapidly. And then you know, you're, you need you you need to make more. Uh, you need more. Uh, you need to make sure that the the the, the trees don't die because of the overnutrition. It's like feeding a baby too much food. The baby will be like very big and moldy. <laughs> well, big babies are always big and moldy, but you get the point. So yeah, that's um, that's the rules, and uh, we cannot bend those rules because the rules are placed, and uh, we can actually vote for the rules. But I like you know taking care of the nature and taking care of all the stuff that is around our co uh, our country anyway. It's good that we have now more variety in our life, uh, in our wildlife. Even though you know the wildlife doesn't have any predators, this is why hunting seasons are actually quite important in our country, and also is celebrated. You know, when you don't have when you don't have predators and you're celebrating a and you're celebrating a hunting season, it means that literally what you're hunting is just wild boars and uh, deer, just to make sure that they don't overpopulate. Sometimes they are put into a zoo, you know. Or into a farm where they then, uh, when they de where they get uh, domesticated to uh, to a certain degree to produce food uh, to produce food that is then later on uh, going to the local butchery shops. So technically, we do have you know those kind of things more often than not. Normally, you would say that it's a delicacy, but uh, here it is a bit overabundant sometimes. Sometimes. So you could technically get it almost for uh, like the same price as uh, as a as a cow. Well, dairy products are a thing here that is mainly produced, and eighty percent of it is actually getting exported. So that's also a thing. But yeah, it's 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 a it's a country where everything is you know everything is taken for granted and nothing happens. It's a lovely country. It's like oh, what you're gonna do today? Well, the same thing as I always do. Just draw and uh, work on my schedule, work on what I want to do. When I'm working, I'm just, you know, doing my business, figuring out how how a software works, then, you know, implementing that knowledge to create certain products that, you know, are needed for our customers. Therefore, you know, I will learn more and then faster learning and then that, that will be adding up into a later state. So. It's it's important that we are you know understanding what uh, what what we're doing, but you know most of what we're doing in our play uh, in our country is just you know working. So it's it's a very living working country. It's almost like Japan, almost I believe. Work is actually a top priority here. It's like we have the one of the most less uh, less uh, what is again unemployment. Yes. Because the government is literally like, if you don't have work, you're not going to get paid. If you don't go to look for work, you're not going to get paid. So even if you're a lazy-ass piece of garbage, you still need to find a job. Otherwise, you're gonna not going to be getting fundings from the government. Which is nice, because it actually makes sure that people don't abuse the system. Especially if people are like from another country and then going inside our country to just benefit from it. That ain't happening because, you know, of all the rules and systems that are, you know, intertwining with each other. Which is a tricky mess, I must say. I already had, like, so many instances where I had to make sure that I do everything the right way. And, uh, phew, jeez. So many people that I had to speak to to just get things done properly. But, it's a good system. Because, you know, you're not going to get... 
you're not gonna get you're not gonna get out of the out of the situation really quickly. You're not gonna get relief from the situation. You just need to know how the system works and then you know implement that knowledge. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm very happy that you know most of this most of uh, what I'm now doing here is just you know I have free time, so therefore I can draw, therefore I can do commissions, therefore I can work on improving myself. And uh, you know, I take that as a granted of a life choice. You know, if if I want to improve upon myself, it's a far better idea than just doing absolutely nothing. I can play all day video games all day long, which is fun. Don't get me wrong, but I do like to keep myself a little bit imp on improving because I do want to create certain types of art or just want to create a silly, uh, a silly uh, T-shirt that I can wear then on uh, certain lo locations or certain events. Which is actually my normal, my goal. <laughs> and I know that might sound a little bit silly, but it's actually quite fun. I take great, I take great, pre I take great pleasure. Yeah, there you go. I take great pleasure on, uh, you know, doing things for my own good. You know, I want, I want to improve upon myself. I want to create a story that I can write and show to people. All right, fine, then go ahead and do it. And I'm like, sure, I will. D yeah. And then, you know, people are like, why are you doing it? I told I told you that you are going to have trouble. And I'm like, well, too bad, too sad. I will do it anyway because I'm, I'm now I'm motivated to do so. And that's why, and that's how the visual novel come to, uh, come, uh, come to a place. Also, the combination between, you know, able to draw girls instead of, you know, only monsters and... Uh, uh, and uh, environments is like a very nice thing, you know, a nice touch. That I'm learning how to draw toony art style. That I'm knowing how to learn to how to draw how to draw other people and just you know the casual you know bomb and uh, all the, all the shenanigans around that. And I really like that, you know, the the the. The amount of stuff that I'm learning just by, you know, practicing, it's insane. Well, it's not insane. It's it's delighted to know that, you know, there is a way to improve. And it's delighted to see that, you know, you can improve by just doing the right thing. Just by doing the things that you want to do in the first place. Most of the most of the ideas that I come across like, oh, this is funny or that is funny and, you know, I implement it. Of course, I do not have very, very much experience upon making it. Therefore, you know, I need multiple tries to uh, succeed. But if I succeed, it will make uh, it will get me better and gets me further to the right position. You know, people would always say like, "Well, you know, you need ta you need talent uh, to uh, to draw properly things." Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But I know one thing for sure. Even if you have a great, even if you have a great uh, aspect or, or a great uh, ha handling, handling. Even if you have like the 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 thing, the magical fingers to create stuff when drawing. All right. Even if you have the magical fingers, it still takes time and learning to get better at it. If you don't improve upon that, you will be stuck with the same thing uh, for almost uh, decades. And I can show you what that means. <laughs> I can show you what that means. That means that you're going to be stuck on one thing and one thing only. Which is not a bad thing. Don't get me wrong there. It's not a bad thing. But it is like very repetitive. It's going to get very the same. And you're not going to be satisfied uh, most of the time. Because you're like, ah oh, man, I wish I could be able to do this. Or ah oh, man, I wish I could be able to do that. And it it creates a kind of feeling that might uh, might you know people be like, man, this sucks. I I cannot continue now because I'm stuck on this part and I I don't know how to do it. And then because you know people are like well you know very centered on being like, oh well, then let's just you know ignore it for a long time until you know something else comes along and then you know we can start over again. So they will push it aside and then you know they call it a day which can cause uh creativity to get uh, get lessened and lessened and lessened because you know you're not motivated to uh fix your problem that you had with the drawing or not motivated to you know try to learn upon 
what other people how other people approach upon it and uh, the ignorance and uh, the uh, uh, how do you say that the ignorance and the the selfishness that uh, comes with it 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 creates such a big hassle. It creates a hazard that you cannot get out of. It's like egoism, but then, uh, but then uh, with with drawing, like, oh man, I wish I was able to draw water. And then you know nobody, and you don't look it up. You don't look up how to draw water. You get frustrated upon because you don't look it up. You don't look on how other artists or other uh, creators create water itself. And then, you know, you uh, don't implement that knowledge that you learned there. And then, you know, you're still having a sucky image of water, which then ruins your entire drawing because it doesn't fit your art style. It doesn't fit the situation where you put it in, which can cause certain amounts of issues. And I must say that that is a thing that happens uh, with me when I was learning how to draw rocks, how to draw, um, how to draw girls, how to draw certain types of animals because you know i'm a very stubborn stubborn goat goat eh, eh, stubborn eh, stubborn goat and i i really am that person that is like uh i won't draw digitally because you know i find it in i found it too i am too superior for this and look at me now i'm drawing digitally why because i want to show other people my artwork and the best way to do it is actually digitally and not physically, because physically things might get damaged. Physically, things it's it's a bit of a problem. It's a it's a technical issue that I always have. Like I can show people with drawing it normally. I still have the handling in my hands because that's how I draw. I draw with the idea of that I always hold a pencil. This, this is my pencil. This is my uh, normal art style. This this is how I also drew on uh, on uh, on a piece of paper. The main problem with this uh, art style is that it is sometimes a bit of an issue with uh, some hassles uh, that or well, some problems that can occur while you know busy drawing it. So the eraser is always the problem with that. So I found it always very annoying that I don't have an eraser with me to uh, fix certain types of things. Anyway, so uh, the uh, the amount of things that I learned from just, you know, going digitally and realizing like, ah, I can do this or I can do that. I know now how to do it. And upgrading my PC, getting better quality in the streams getting better better quality in the uh, performances of the uh, of the program really improved upon that as well because now the thing is more responsive and i can go even further with detail and you know detail is king with this kind of art style because you know the more detail i put into it the better it gets but of course you know i need to realize that sometimes the detail can cause some major issues that uh, might occur later on also, as you can see right now, uh, once we add the uh, once we add the second color to it, this whole thing will look so much more different. You don't, uh, you will see it. You will see it uh, once I'm done with this. That uh, you will see that this is all gonna, gonna get really. It's gonna be not very strange, but it's gonna be you know, creating certain types of feelings, creating certain types of ideas that. Uh, helps me uh, improve upon the upon the drawing itself of course you know it's a bit of a hassle sometimes to work on it because you know it's a big tree and uh, it uh, gives a lot of issues with it well brings a lot of issues with it not gives brings yeah dutch and english is such a very problematic combination most likely because they use the same words sometimes and sometimes they do use French words and sometimes they don't use French words and sometimes the vocabulary is totally out of out of whack. Uh, not having a native not having the native language of English and then trying to explain things to people. Ooh, it's scary. But yeah. Um so what I what I learned from uh from my earlier work, the things that I always had problems with was shadows, shading, uh but uh, I learned to I learned by you know 
experimenting, a learning by, you know, it was a very slow pro uh, process. It was not that I improved. I saw other people improve, don't get me wrong now. I saw other people improve, I saw other people's art style. But I was always like, you know, oh my god, your art style is great. And then, you know, I still had like, you know, only done the the line art for it. So I always worked black and white, so I didn't use colors, so therefore I didn't use shading of coloring. I didn't use, uh, I didn't use shadowing, I didn't use, well, I did use shadowing, but... It, it gets it gets really it gets really weird when you don't use colors and you just use black and white and work on uh, work from there, and then finally learn how to do coloring, and uh, learning to how the body works and how you know you look at certain types of things, and then still you know I always had I always kept the Tony art style when I was a kid and used it for my own amusement like oh well I'm gonna draw this or I'm gonna be making hangman with uh you know certain types of uh creatures and then you know have the like you know let one of my friends guess what uh what kind of word i wrote down and then you know the hangman would be completed because the words i choose were really dick dick words they were like um uh, how do you say that uh cloud so normally cloud is a very cheap word to go for and wolf is a very hard word but in our in our in our language, the cloud is actually walk, and wolf is actually horn is actually wolf. So wolf and walk, walk, uh, both have that stupid L K, uh, uh, the L and the W uh, and the W the M, the W, in there, which are uh, very not very common uh, letters to use when uh, playing hangman because if you're going for hangman normally the strategy is like i'm gonna go for a a so a a uh u u and then you're gonna go for o so the o is always is, uh, is uh, always is last so school the the u the u is always the last one to go for and because it's a very complicated letter because it's a complicated uh, because it's like because it is so uh, uncommon to use it you're like really already like five strokes in before you even get to the point where you know you're like ah well we have one whole letter done yay and then you still need the rest so with five with five strokes down most of the time with four or three strokes down most of the time you only have like more like one, two, three, four, five, six chances. So with already your chance cut in half, it's very unlikely you would win the the it would be very like uh unlikely that you would guess the word because of the comp uh, complications with the uh, with the wording. Because technically there is a lot of words that you can get from uh, just a, uh, just a, just a, oh, like post, that's a P-O-S-T. So people would go like for, people would technically go always for the T, but because T is not in there, because T is not in, in Wolf, uh, yeah, you would already have like five strokes. And then the S, because S is always a thing that might occur, like the, uh, the S will be occurring and then the P will be occurring. Because the uh, S and T, S and T and P are the things that actually are always there, that might uh, that people would like to guess. Um, you're already halfway to uh, well, you're already dead because Hangman only has six chances. Therefore, you lose because you know this is already death. Well, you could go for the original one, so you're gonna go for one, two, three, four, five six seven eight nine so you have nine chances but be uh, because of all those stupid words it might be already like this this would be already your uh, your thing so you only have like two guesses left and those guesses can be really hard because then people are like wait then there's supposed to be a z in there right because you know there is there are words with a z in it with o like um uh woo. There are not so many words with Z in this, that, but in our in our language, there are, but not in that language, not in English. But 
you get the point. It's uh, it's gonna get very complicated very fast. So people would go probably for the D as well instead of the uh, instead of the T, and because the D is also not called, uh, people would go for um, the K, I believe as well. So the K would D go, but if they go for Wolf, uh, it's not. So the K would also be cool, and then you're already dead. So yeah. Two two guesses. Most of you're always like almost on death's door when when you're when you're when you're playing the word wolf in 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 certain thing, because the idea is if you pick a big word like you know roller coaster or something like that, uh, people would get far easier get the word because of the amount of uh, letters in there. So because the variety of letters and the amount of letters is important to understand. So if a letter has multiple multiple O's or multiple S's or multiple T's, it will be far easier to guess which kind of word it is. But if you have like a very amount of unique letters that forms a word, it gets far more uh, far more difficult for the uh, for the people to guess what kind of words you're using, what kind of mystery kind of ideas you're trying to uh trying to achieve with that wording because it's like does he mean that does he mean that and then everybody's like oh man i'm panicking because we're only like three left or we're already six in and we don't even have anything so the mi the mystery of you know getting pressured and uh the stress that might come with it it can cause people to lose their thinking process most of the times so yeah so short words with unique letters is a uh, is the key to victory with uh, that's uh, with that uh, hangman game, most of the time, most of the time, people might say no, may people might say yes, that's exactly what I was meaning to say, and if you were like a child, you would always say like no, that's not the word, it was the other word, um, mm, mm, and then change it up halfway. <laughs> Which is always a dick move, you know. Cheating, cheating in Hangman is a dick move. It's a, uh, I have man, uh, I have managed to do it once, but uh, phew, I was not satisfied. All right. So, uh, let's see. Are we gonna go fully downwards? Yeah, we're gonna do that. So we're gonna go right here, and we're gonna add that bit up. So, to make to make things better for us right now, it's it's important that we keep on with the uh, lines that we use here and there. We we don't want to we don't want to make it too messy, but we do want to have some variety into the strokes of the lines, because if we now look at this right here, we can see it's it's quite it's quite the same right about here. It's all the same a bit, so we need to fix that a bit uh, once we're done with this whole thing. Because we don't want to have like very open places where everything is the same. Makes uh, makes things look uh, a little bit uh, out of whack. And yes, you can you can have some stuff that is always the same, but keep in mind that that might cause some issues later on. So yeah, making things more or less less than the same is most likely key here to create less of a variety or oh, create more of a variety in the in the tree bark itself because the more variety we create in this tree bark the better it gets for us later on because that's how the tree bark works if you implement more of it mm, there you go Alright. There you go. So all of this is actually quite nice to see. You know, we're we're trying to get we're trying to push the uh, the roots in there, trying to figure out like, oh well we have this, we have that, we have this, and we don't want to increase the size of the roots because oh the bark, because if we put too much of the bark in there it can backfire big time because then you know the tree will be looking like the tree that we had before and that is bad because well you know it won't fit with the rest of the tree therefore you know we need to re redo it or you know implement some st uh, variety in there 
So we we can we can add some more line strokes in there. That's the idea. So more line strokes creates um there you go. So more line strokes will create a more impactful idea of what we have right now. So if we add some line strokes here and there and making sure that that is the thing that we want to go for, it creates more of a, a, a an idea, more of a future for the, the, the box skin itself. Because the more we do this, the better it gets. So... Now we're here, and then once we're done with this, we are going to be putting that uh, line stroke. We're going to add some line strokes into the drawing itself by zooming out. Uh, because zooming out actually gives us more of a, a general idea of like where we need to go and putting them in there. I mean, it's always uh, it's always the same, you know, it's... Uh, it's always looking at the same thing. It's always looking at, this, uh, looking at you know, we're looking at a bloody damn bark, and your eyes might deceive you. That's the main problem. Because we're creating our own texture and we're not using any stamps because, well, you know, I'm not a fan of stamps because stamps can... They are good for certain types of things, but they're not good for creating bark if you want to create a bark, like a line art bark. Because if you want to create line eye bark, the stamps won't work because you know only gonna get it's it's better for uh, the uh, color, yeah. For the coloring, if you're gonna go for a stamp of bark, it, it it creates it creates the bark effect. So you go for like a coloring, uh, p um, a painted background. So if you would go for that. Go ahead, use stamps. It's it's the be best thing you can go for because you can still uh, create some multiple varieties of it. It's just you know it it's way quicker and way easier to use. But if you go for things like you know a, a line art kind of box skin, it uh, it is more of a it doesn't give the same feeling if you then use a stamp because well you know the box skin is not uh, is is unique. Therefore you know the, the stamp won't work. So if you combine them both, it won't work. If you use it alone, it's, uh, it's a bit of an issue. No. Yeah. Alright, so. Now we're going to go here and look at this. So we're going to look at this and we can see where the hell we need to place stuff and where we don't place stuff. So you can see that there are some issues here with some empty places where, you know, things are like, ah, oh, well, this is too thick or that is too thick. Right, right here. There are some issues right here that can be, can be solved quite quickly and quite easily because of the amount of stuff that is in the inside of these bar, uh, barks. They, they, they leave open too many rooms. And because they leave open too many rooms, it creates a kind of a gap that um, if you if you add the if you add then the the, uh, the 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 second color to it, it can give a little bit of an emptiness to it. So yeah, we're we're gonna make sure that we don't have that. We're gonna make sure that we have some lines here and there, filling up the gaps that uh, are caused by you know just trying to create the bark skin. Even though, you know, we made some mistakes, we can still fill it up. And that is the most important part here. Of course, we don't want to do this everywhere, but we do want to do this in the places where, you know, it's definitely visible. Like, for for instance, here it is very visible that this is a line, that this is like, you know, multiple lines drawn upwards. And we don't want that. We, we don't want to have that kind of idea when we're drawing the, uh, when we're drawing the bark itself because if we do that it doesn't give the feeling of it so we want this bark to be as uh we want this bark to be as uh tree looking like as possible and that's important and with tree with trees for 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 all trees considered it's like you know you you're building up from you're building up bricks literally a tree is built up by bricks so if if there is a malfunction in a brick, in the bricks, there will be a, another brick laid upon it, which gives this, uh, f which gives this uh, uh, strange uh, effect sometimes when you look at old trees. They they sometimes have missed. They have like big giant 
uh, empty places or like in capings, which implements that there has been something broken down or it had it had been heard by the weather or by wind. It all depends on what what kind of wind, but yeah, or hurricanes. I don't know. All these things that are natural enemies of the of a tree. Let's put it that way. So also that uh, can be caused by termites or an infection within within the tree. Most likely the infection within the tree can cause the tree to die, but eh, don't want to be going too sciencey on that one, or you know, to biology. <laughs> Science with biology. Well, technically, biology is science. It's just you know different kind of science. Uh, yeah, that is that is it. That's it. That's it. Go, 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 go. And now we're gonna pick up our color. So we do have uh, we do uh, eh. now. Uh, we need to upscale the size. Then go here, and then we're gonna add this bad one right here we need this one to be fixed so we're gonna pick this up we're gonna save this and then we're gonna add the last bits of color that we need which are right over here are some issues that we are le that we left behind and here is here are some issues that we left behind so now we have this part right here fully filled up and that part right there fully filled up good now we have these two, which, um, no, where is it? This one, right? No, I am lost. This one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need to remove this one, which is the uh, testing, um, testing lines, which we cannot have. We we don't want these lines. But now you can see that there are still some uh, issues uh, with the lines that we have drew. Some of them are not fully functional, so we need to redo them. And uh, yeah, we can do that. It's it's not a big deal. But you can see that there are some lines here and there that need to be drawn in because of how these work. Oh, I'm using the I'm using the wrong uh, I'm using the wrong wrong tool. The main issue is big. Ooh, eh, there you go. And then put this one. No, this one. I'm using the wrong tool because we want a soft brush here. Because if we don't use a soft brush, things might look a little bit out of whack. So, there you go. And we can add that in. And we can give this like a good old fashioned feeling right there. Yes. All right. And I can move this downwards that way. So I don't need to go for this one. I can keep that line though. And then I want I want this line right here. And then I want this line right here I want as well. Which is the uh, big bloody one. And then right here is another line that can be used for later uses. And then right here, there is another one. And then right here, there is another one. All right, cool. Now we can go back and then we can finally start with the, uh, the coloring of the, the thing. So. Um, with coloring, it's going to be a thing that I want to do right over here and pick up the color. I'm zooming in just because I am not going to be doing this the other way around. And I'm going to le leave it like this. So, with coloring, we need to make sure that we're following the lines. And so the more we do this, the better it gets. Don't worry about it too much. We're just following the lines, getting the, uh, the, the coloring in there. You can see the more the more we follow the lines, it it gets quite nice. We have not yet do the shading. We just you know do the line. We're just doing the colors for the first colors, and then we're gonna add the shading later on once the whole tree is done. This way uh, we can create more uh, more depths into the into the tree. 
So with the effects you could use stamps, but when you're drawing the line art, it's not very handy dandy. Well, you could use it to create forms, and then use those forms to create more effects later on, but eh. Uh, I should definitely not press that button. And I should have updated my tablet. Well, I'm going to be updating my tablet then tomorrow, or well, tonight. Because, you know, I don't need it after uh, working on the Mofog. Gonna be uh, recording something else and then you know posting it later on. All right. So, um, let's see. This is like what I want to do. This is how we're gonna do it, and then that should be it, right? Yes, 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 yes. All right. So yeah, um, how much time have we already been here? 45 minutes. Oh, hey, Dewey. Lunge and back out of the door. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, didn't see that, man. I was way too concentrated on the bloody damn thing. Ugh. Yeah, lunch is always great, you know, when you have lunch. Ah, reminds me of my lunch breaks. When I brought bloody damn pie to my boss, and it's like, "Hey boss, you wanna you wanna get bribed by pie?" And then my boss is like, "Hell yeah!" And then you know you eat you eat the pie and you get compliments because of the pie is that good. Ah, uh, best pie, <laughs> best pie, best pie now to buy. Yeah, I must say that though, I really like my country. Good pie, good food, great, great healthcare. And I mean, like, holy shit, so good. It's such a nice country. And because all the dairy products are almost as cheap as dirt, it doesn't matter. Like, one one dollar for, for a dairy product is good. And three dollars for cheese. That's uh, that's quite decent. X is also quite decent. 150, I believe. 150, uh, 150, so... It's a, it's a, it's a rich country, but... Uh, the prices are still there correctly, even though we have like an inflation of 7% already, because, well, we ain't gonna spend it. We might just, you know, put it somewhere else. Holy hell, man. Spending stuff. Could you imagine that? You know, being having a whole country just being able to be like, we're just gonna wait until everything is over and then we're gonna spend something. Yeah, that's the country. That's the country I live in. It's lovely having people to just be like we're not gonna spend a single dime on this this is garbage we're just gonna wait for the next thing to come out something like that always happens this is why you know this country actually works quite well because if something if somebody invents like a kind of machine to be like wow this is the newest machine out there and then people are like so when is it gonna be on sale <laughs> That's the casual that's the casual Dutch customer most of the time. Just waiting for a sale to happen and be like, Oh, don't mind me just buying it now. Instead of, you know, buying it fully. Art is life. Uh, art is life, no problems. Yeah. Art is always life. Enjoy your lunch, man. That's that's the most important thing. Lunch. It gives you energy. Energy and booze. I don't know what booze means, but I believe it's it, it's the German word for fun. No, wait. German f uh, word for fun is toll. So, uh, yes. Böse. Energie and Böse. <laughs> Sounds so funny. My friends and I always are like... It's it's one of those jokes I don't understand. And I'm just like, alright, I'll just roll with it then, I guess. Energie and Böse. <laughs> But yeah, I'm trying to keep everything in the... I am trying to keep everything uh, English. Because, you know, English is one of those things that... Uh, is one of those worldwide... Uh, uh, worldwide... Uh, uh, languages that is understandable. Apparently. Somehow it is the world mis most spoken language there is, I believe. And then it's Chinese and Japanese. And then, you know, somewhere in the mid mid 20s or something in the in the 40s then you have dutch it's like 
When, when do you speak Dutch? Well, you only speak Dutch if you speak to a Dutch person or if you go to one of their uh, former colonies, then yeah, you can speak Dutch, then everybody understands you or they're just going to speak English to you because, you know, it's far easier for to approaching a tourist. You know, like you want to say like, hey, you man, you want to get high. And then, you know, everybody's like, yes, man, I do. Yes, it's uh, that kind of tourism. It's one of those things that actually get taxed quite well. So, uh, you know, we're making profit out of that as well. So, dairy products, drugs, all the stuff. It's all there in my country. And nobody bets an eye. <laughs> because it's all legalized. It's great. It's all legalized. Milk is legalized. Alcohol is legalized. Soft drugs are legalized, and uh, you know most of the people that are coming to our country, most tourists actually just go for the drugs because they—that's the only thing they know about our country. It's like, what do we have? Well, we have drugs and uh, something about windmills. Yeah, that's the Dutch. That's the Dutch windmills and drugs. And then people would, and then I would say like. Uh, so you don't know that we're actually one of the most best countries where you can bike without getting run over. All right. Thanks for not. Thanks for only thinking about drugs. I guess. <laughs> but the good thing, uh, the good thing though, is that you know all of uh, all of that hard effort, all of that hard effort will eventually you know pay off. I mean, really. If you if you can if you have if you have a, a living economy and make too much profit, therefore you know having such a high uh, having such a high uh, how do you say that uh, uh, come on I just said it once ah inflation there you go uh, inflation you know that that's that means that your that your that's that means that your country is very profitable. And it is true, you know. We're we're selling we're selling gas, we're selling uh, we're selling dairy products. We're making pro we're making pro we're making profit out of people that just come here because of the memes, I guess. And uh, it's a very good country. Uh, we even you know support uh, people that just come from other countries that uh, flat ever uh, flat other countries because you know that's how our country works. We always supported people that just ran away from certain situations. So, uh, yeah, a very nice country. Just a very, very, very scary country when it comes to uh, people, uh, to accepting people sometimes, because, you know, we don't, we don't, uh, we're very, uh, most of these, most of the uh, uh, villages are very, are very, very iffy to outsiders. But, uh, you know, the cities, they don't give a shit. They don't give a shit where you're from. You can just start a party and everybody's going to party with you because that's how the Dutch work. And then, you know, you're probably going to get arrested because you didn't organize the party properly. <laughs> because it's against the rules. Uh, I, lo I love that. I love that just so much. Like, well, according to my rules, you didn't, you didn't sign, you didn't do this properly. So therefore, you know, you're gonna get a fine. You're not gonna get go to straight to jail or something, but you're just gonna get a fine because, well, we don't like, we don't like, you know, you putting such much of a ruckus down here. So uh, accept the fine, or you're gonna go to jail. And then people are like looking at the fine. And it's like, why are I pay why am I paying paying almost thousand dollars just for this fine? And then it's like. Well, um, you could technically technically get a discount on this fine if you just, you know, sign here, 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 and then uh, and then put a complaint down there, and there, and there, and there, and then according to Article Four Eight Five Nine, uh, your uh, your your fine will be uh, looked into, and if then the judge will say no. Or if the judge says it is a little bit unreasonable, then you will might we might cut the fine down to uh, twenty bucks. That's all, folks. <laughs> Our fearless leader bur bur burned so much money; he had to print more <laughs> more to burn. <laughs> Stand proud, so uh, son of Van Gogh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, it's so much. 
it's such it's such funniness like ah oh, well we make too much money therefore we have therefore we don't know what to do with it well we know what to do with it invested in china or other com uh, other big uh, countries like uh, canada or the united states because the united states and the netherlands do share a lovely little heritage with each other especially the united uh, especially new york so we do like to keep those things uh, intact but uh, you know that's a that's a Dutch for you. It's a it's a lovely country that is built about money, thinks about and that builds that's built around money, thinks about money, and is governed by the uh, government. It's governed by the people, ruled by a king, <laughs> and uh, it's a very uh, very cool. It's a very funny. It's a very fun and hard hard. It's a very fun and hardworking people. In that, because you know that's the Dutch for you. We didn't earn the money just by looking at looking at paintings. No, 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 no. We we created the paintings with passion, and then after that, we also you know make money because of uh, all the hardworking uh, industry that we are did. We we actually went from a very farm farmable country to a very heavy industrialized farmland. So uh, yeah. That's also why uh, we put things in. That's why we actually also have like uh, contracts in uh, Canada because we actually uh, like to collaborate with them uh, on the dairy products. Because well, you know, we gotta move the cows somewhere. We have cows ourselves, but you know, if you have too many cows and you have too little land because your land is literally almost underwater, you know, you can either build some more land, which we already did, and now we're like. Well, uh, the, the the sea level is uh, rising again. Uh, we cannot put any more land down, aren't we? Nope, we can't. Uh, so are we gonna move our, all our most of our dairy products to Canada and put, and then put some buy some land there and then put the cattle there and then you know Canada is gonna get a discount? Yeah, that sounds fair. So the farmers went like do 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 do, and uh, yeah, uh, Canada is now also one of those places where you know Dutch farmers are like. Yeah, we're gonna give Canada a discount on our places, and the government of the, the Dutch government is gonna get taxes uh, for our profit. So yeah, because the co because the company is in the Dutch, because the company is Dutch, the Dutch can tax on the company even though it's in Canada, and then therefore you know the Dutch will make profit. How much profit? Well, twenty one percent of the profit most of the times. So it's a lot of profit, and that's how money works. It's a very Lovely country, all about lovely money. And I must say, though, it's a, it's nice to know how. Uh, it's nice to know that you know you're living in a country where everything is ruled by, things where everything where you think about is money, and you know like, wow, I wish I had that kind of amount of money. And then you realize like, all right, so how much money can I spend today? And then you realize like oh well i can only spend 20 bucks a day otherwise you know i have to do the taxes so it's very nice to uh, keep your uh, mathematics uh, in 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 check because uh, that's definitely a thing you're going to need if you want to live in the in the netherlands knowing how mathematic works and uh, knowing how everything wor uh, how how taxes work because holy hell there is so much taxes <laughs> because you know we don't want to make sure that nobody's making profit except the government. But uh, it's a it's a good place. Well, technically everybody makes profit, but the government makes the most profit. So it's a it's still fair. It's still fair. This is also why the uh, this is also why there is a tax haven. Uh, it's because you know, oh, you're from another country. Well, that means you're special. But you're gonna put the headquarters on our country, right? All right, then we're gonna give you a discount. <laughs> Only then. So yeah, um, that means also that because we're giving them a discount, it means that they they won't be leaving because well, you know, who's gonna leave if you have a discount on a country that literally is one of the most worldwide networks <laughs> networks of you know trans transportation of goods, and you have then literally a harbor where you can just put your goods down and it makes it even more cheaper to transport them. Yeah. Um. You would like to keep that headquarters on the, on the on a country where you make a lots of profit. Well, you know, the EU is like, hey, you cannot do this. And then we are like putting our rule book down and it's like, yes, yes, yes. You were saying something? <laughs> 
because, you know, we don't care if the EU says, like, we cannot do this. But the EU is also saying, like, you need to do, you need to make sure that you put everything on the green terms. Like, you need to make sure that you ma make as less possible CO2 as possible. It's like, all right, we will do that. But, and then, you know, we're shoving that into their face. It's like, we cannot do that if we don't make profit. And then, you know, the whole talk about money is going to be running around again. And then, you know, the, and then the EU is like, all right, fine. Ugh. All right, you can do it. All right, you can keep those people ta uh, in a tax haven. Of course, the government of the other side, you know, the, the United States or Canada is like, hey, you're c we cannot tax them. Therefore, we r we are the ones that are not profiting on it. So why don't we give them a discount on d to put their headquarters on our side? And it's like, but our discount discount is more. And then they're like, God damn it. <laughs> Because we can technically afford it, and uh, a government that cannot a government that cannot afford the uh, cannot afford to become a tax haven is a is not a very profitable country, and therefore you know, because money money change, changes hands, it's a it's a very lovely impact it always makes, and it also gives more, uh, it also gives us a boom of industry, which is always nice. Uh, technology and industry here is like very advanced, especially in the real ways. Everything is up to date, everything is keep there, but you know, there are still some things there here and there that it might not be in the right position, but oh well. I hope, uh, aww, you related the thing? Welcome to tax, uh, tax, uh, tax, for, of tax farm, yes, exactly. Welcome to tax farm point two. Ah, it's like creating cities. It's like playing city skylines, but then you know, in real life. <laughs> and there is no, there is, there is absolute. It's a very relaxing place. There is nothing to do. It's just you know, if you're going to on on a vacation here, it's like, what can I do here? Well, you can watch the trees grow. There you go. You can go to a forest and watch the trees grow. That's all you can do here. It's it's a. It's a, it's a place where everything is just, you know, relaxing. It's like, oh, we can watch some monuments and go to a museum. Yeah, exactly. You can go to a museum. Are there any are there any amusement parks? Well, there are two. Well, tec technically there are three. One is in a one is in a homemade uh, is in a man-made lands um, landscape. The other one is uh near uh what is it again? Near uh uh, near uh, a World War Two city, and the other one is the other one is near Farmland 2.0. So somebody bought up a farmland and was like, "You know what I need? An amusement park here." And everybody's like, and then the farmers around it is like, "Excuse me, what?" <laughs> so when you look at the place, you just because I live very close to it, it's like. You look at the place and it's like, wow, that's a lot of farmland. And they put all these things down there and they're going to expand even further? All right, cool. But is the government taxing them? And then you realize like, yes, yes, they do. It's like, wow, I wonder how much profit it makes. And then you realize like, why are there so many German cars here? Oh, wait, it's, a, it's almost at the border. Ah. How could I not have seen that? <laughs> because um, one of the amusement parks, uh, there is always like a variety of um, how do you say that? Variety of um, uh, tourists going there, like you know Chinese, uh, Japanese, uh, uh, Italians, Czechs, Slovakians, Bosnians, uh, Hungarians, all the people. That they they're always going to the same bloody damn amusement park because it's the biggest one. But Germans, however, they always go to the other one because it's literally across the border, and then you know five minute drive and it's like, hey, we're at an amusement park. Is this one cheaper than the uh, than the ones that we had uh, at our place? Yes. All right, let's go. So yeah, uh, most of the um. Most of the tourist industries uh, that are in the lo uh, in the uh, in the provinces be uh, in the province 
uh, that is uh, in my uh, in out in the in the look in the places where Germany is connected. A lot of the tourism is just Germans because Germans like one thing: they like beer, they like they like amusement parks, but they also like to go on holiday, going on a camping. You know, uh, how do you say that? Is it camping? Yeah, probably it's camping, right? Yeah, you have a caravan and then you put that down in a place where you know there is organization, there is like uh, amusement for children. There is like mascots uh, entertaining children. There is like good food, and uh, yeah, a lot of Germans like it. You know, all those old people, all those uh, people that have like uh, uh, two children and then one uh, one one dog or something like that, and they always go to these uh, places just because it's very easy to go to. It's very easy to access. It's very uh, relaxing and there is nothing to do there but just relaxing on a in a bubble bath or going uh, into a into a um, into a swimming pool that is fully warmed up like uh, with um, with um, how do you say that a pool yeah probably a pool right it's a, a pool with um... ah how do you say that a slut no Leiban Jesus. Uh, Google Translate. Because I know the word there, but I don't know the word of the bloody damn English one. Uh, Google Translate. Please, translate me this. Hleiban. A slide. Yes, yes, yes. A water slide. There you go. Jeez, way too difficult for me. So yeah, the water slides. Uh, there are water slides there. There is um, there is like a simulation of an ocean waves in those uh, in those swimming pools, and it's quite big always. But you know, you also have saunas. You have Finnish saunas. You have Japanese saunas. You have everything you want. Why? Because, as I uh, as I said before, the Dutch always likes to uh, the Dutch always likes to include everybody in their uh, whatever they want to do and you know what makes the most profit is always you know putting everything in there that everybody likes and that's why those uh, camp uh, that's why those campings with uh, you know lots of people uh, when you go on vacation you can meet like probably thousand people in one place and then you also have the old school ones where you know farmers are like hey you can put your tent down here and just you know have some breakfast uh, later on, and uh, you know you're gonna get free eggs, free milk, whatever. No, those 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 campings are also very cool. But yeah, it's a uh, it's a lovely it's a lovely country to uh, live in. It's a very fun country. But uh, absolutely nothing happens there. Absolutely nothing. If you if you were looking for something with action or you know some place where you can do everything you want to do, it's a uh, it's a place where you just can relax and do absolutely whatever you want, but eh, it's not gonna have an impact. <laughs> and people are like, "But, but we need to think about these people or these people." And then you know, you you look at and then you look at the country. It's like, uh, that's already suited. Just sit down and relax, man. There is nothing to do here. Take 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 this, and then you know, you give them some alcohol, or whatever, and then they just chillax. It's only the youth that are a little bit, uh, some's a little bit rowdy, but oh well, you know, that happens. Alright, uh, I'm gonna be saving this bad boy because I see that it's almost time. Oh, well, we have already 10 minutes above our time, about uh, above our time, but uh, I had a lot of times. <laughs> Wisp sneezed. Yep. Um, anyway, um, I hope you all have enjoyed for today. And uh, thanks all for watching, and I hope I'll see you all next time. Until then, I want to wish you all a lovely day, and uh, bye!